I am Adoni Mohamed Sarib. So I am from Singapore. Um, my research is on chromatin biology, which is how DNA is packaged into the cell. If you think about how much DNA we have, um, the huge amount of DNA, how it's packaged during normal development and diseases, this is important to understand, as well as the signals, so what controls your genes. Um, so that is part of my research. My name is Salisu Mutari and I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Mathematics and Physics at Queen's University, Belfast. I am originally from Niger, okay, um, so I graduated partly in Africa and then most of my postgraduate in France. And then afterwards I went to Germany for some research fellow and then from Germany I came, I came here. So I came here at the end of 2008. My reasons for joining Queen was more a career progression and a transition. So I did my PhD in the Netherlands and stayed there for my postdoc and stayed as a scientist. Um, that was um, for many years. Uh, when the position came up uh, at Queen's University and, and other UK universities, I applied for it and, and, and it fit uh, very well with the research that I have been doing, which is on chromatin and epigenetics. What Queen's is looking for is a mathematician who is interested in statistics and operational research. And that's really what I'm looking for. Okay, so it matches what I'm looking for exactly. I when I just show the when I just saw the job description, it just matches exactly what I'm looking for. So that's my main motivation for coming at Queens. And since then I enjoy my time here. I speak English. You know, growing up in Singapore and, and uh, having studied in Singapore, um, the first language is English. You're required to take a second language, um, either Malay, Chinese uh, or Tamil, um, depending on your race and ethnicity. But now I think you're allowed to choose which other second language. So I speak Malay um, and I speak Dutch for the many years that I have lived and worked in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, and I do, um, coming from, um, uh, my parents are Muslim, so um, we, um, we were taught to, to read Arabic as well. Operational research is a term originated from military operations. So up to before the Second World War, it's a discipline which is just within the military. And then after the Second World War, we, this, the, mem the same techniques have been adapted now to solve business problems. So operational research is just about using mathematics or scientific tools available, generally mathematics, and also using some computer science to solve complex management or optimization problems. Having moved from Singapore um, at a fairly young age, so I studied in United Kingdom. So I was in Wales and, and Oxford and London as well. So um, before moving back to Singapore and then to the Netherlands um, and then here in Belfast. So I um, mean, settling in was, um, uh, I mean, initially clearly, you know, it's, it's, you don't know anybody, right? So, I mean, but um, I find um, locals or no Northern Irish um, uh, people are actually very friendly and um, taking a lot of taxis <laughs> has helped uh, understand or know more about the culture as well and how friendly Northern Irish people are and, and the taxi or the cab driver, most of them say is that um, Northern Irish are very friendly to foreigners. So <laughs> that was very helpful. I have some interest in many, in many topics, this include traffic modeling, road safety, bioinformatics, hydraulics, and uh, even recently op ophthalmic optics. Um, but my main focus is on traffic modeling. Okay. And in traffic modeling, yeah, I combine these operational research techniques and also some applied math techniques as to assess the or to model the traffic dynamics in road network or in transportation systems. So um, I'm the current co-chair of RI since um, last June 
2021. Um, so before that, I was very active at the, in the Gender Equality Committee of the School of uh, Medicine. Um, I was the academic, academic rep, uh, representative for the Patrick G. Johnson Center for Cancer Research. And so I've been with the gender equality since, and actually up to now as well, um, since uh, I think 2018, 2019. So that's how it all started. Um, and there I was also the uh, weekend coordinator, which is, uh, we coordinate um, uh, for, for early, early career academics. It's a women's network where we organize um, uh, external speakers or internal speakers to discuss about current issues um, uh, relating also to the progression of women at Queen's. Um, and later there was, um, there was expression of interest for a coach of IRIS, which I applied for and got appointed for. So that's how, and, and, and it's also, uh, it, it kind of integrates and blends quite in with um, the previous or current um, a committee that I was involved in and still involved in, which is the Gender Equality Committee. Um, so I rise, um, well, we are the Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic and, and um, International Staff Network, and um, which is a very dynamic group. Um, we represent, you know, very uh, diverse um, um, uh, uh, colleagues um, from multiple um, ethnicity, race, um, uh, also um, geographical <laughs> locations as well. Um, and that, you know, we hope to have um, uh, more visibility and, and to, um, uh, to address the barriers um, for, um, for this group of uh, staff. So I lived in many countries and uh, actually I was quite impressed when I arrived in Belfast when I arrived at Queen's with the diversity of uh, the staff within the university in general and within the school of math and physics in particular. So, and uh, my interest in race equity charter is actually to consolidate this diversity and also to help raise awareness about issues related to diversity and inclusion. IRISE, uh, we work together with a lot of uh, networks and, and committees as well, and uh, one of them is um, the um, Racial Equity uh, Champions uh, Network, and together as well with Queen's Gender Initiative. Um, so Queen's um, has uh, signed up to the Race Equality Charter, um, uh, last year, <laughs> uh, 2021, 2020, sorry. Um, so um, I'm there together with, with the right champions and, and IRIS or, or our committee members uh, that we, we hope, you know, we plan um, to make a difference. I rise together with uh, the RAC Network. We uh, were at the Black History Expo, which is part um, of the Black History Month in October 2022. Uh, we had a stand with um, uh, information on the uh, Race Equity Charter that Queens has joined um, in 2020. Um, and um, uh, together with other organizations and communities who had also stalls there. So there were, there were um, uh, speakers, um, uh, as well as arts, music, uh, entertainment, as well food throughout the day and the evening as well. Um, this is a very good platform for um, IRIS and Queens, um, where um, uh, there was uh, there were there was space to discuss about um, uh, racial equity, um, and also um, um, there were. Um, uh, the ministers were, were also there, you know, we had the opportunity to discuss the work of uh, IRIS and RAC um, together with them as well. Um, IRIS have been uh, more visible um, in, in this past year, or also in, in the last couple of years as well. Um, so we've had, uh, we've organized um, several uh, cultural events and several events that mark um, 
um, uh, Im important crucial days you know for diversity and inclusivity um, together with other next networks as well um, uh, we have a lot of uh, plans and goals for IRISE um, uh, which also encompasses in um, uh, the uh, Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic and International uh, staff as well. Um, so um, uh, one would be uh, more to, to better or to increase the visibility of Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic and International staff um, at Queen's uh, and on top of that um, uh, increase also uh, or improve the uh, progression of um, uh, uh, Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic, International staff at the more senior, uh, senior level and senior roles as well. Um, and of course, um, overall, to, um, to, be, um, uh, to be more diverse and inclusive, um, regardless of race, uh, gender, ethnicity as well, um, uh, in general for uh, throughout uh, the whole of Queens. I find uh, in Northern Ireland in general or in Ireland in general the people are quite open and uh, probably I can say Ireland is one of the country which could easily understood people coming from other countries I can say because uh, if we take the case let's say in Africa I think Ireland understood very well what is going on because they have been through somehow the same thing probably a little bit earlier but they understand all these uh, current issues you know even at the moment I think uh, as I told you from my experience I was really surprised because I thought when I was coming here from the geographical location I didn't expect really to find uh, such diversity and, uh, and I was quite impressed so I think this probably has to be with the way people felt welcome here. Yeah. You know, I am I'm an optimist, <laughs> so I am hopeful. However, I am aware that um, um, the way up or to induce change, to have change, um, the stairs, um, going up the stairs um, is never straight up. So that's going to be... Um, it's going to be a bit wobbly, uh, but um, I think, you know, there's always hope, right? There's always room for improvement and, and room for change. So um, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, might not happen during my uh, co-chairship, uh, which will end uh, in June next year. So, but, you know, I'm hopeful that, you know, um, it will be in good hands um, that we will uh, we will uh, achieve our goals.